Hello friends, in this lecture, we are going to learn about CSMA protocol for the medium access control. Okay, so we will look at carrier sense multiple access and what it says is initially we learned about Aloha protocol where it let's say so this these are four nodes on a medium okay which is shared among them so this is let's say a LAN and A, B, C and D they all can transmit so in Aloha or in the simplest Aloha protocol whenever someone has some data to send they will just send it okay without considering possible collision so if let's say A starts to send a frame which takes some time let's say 2 millisecond so you start the transmission A starts transmission and it takes 2 seconds to transmit the whole frame and if during this period if B, C or D any one of them starts transmitting okay then there will be collision and both the frames will be destroyed and because no one senses the medium okay so there is a lot of collision and your throughput decreases okay so the problem with aloha is the throughput is really less okay so it's just around 18 percent why because you never check that the channel is busy or not but in reality it's in fact easy to check if the channel is busy or not so if the channel is idle okay so no one is using it then there will be no energy kind of thing if it's someone is transmitting then it will have more power and if there is collision there will be even more power okay so you check based on the energy if your channel is busy or not so you sense the channel and then what happens so here it is carrier sensing so you sense the channel and if I find that okay no one is there who is transmitting then I will transmit my frame so well and good so now you will think that okay it will work always okay but not that's not true okay so what this diagram shows is that let's say so this is a LAN and what happens that this is the time okay time axis and this is the length of the wire okay and you should know that even the signals to propagate they take some time even with the speed of light which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so if I start transmission here so the what happens is that bit to go all over okay till here it will take some time okay so if let's say this is the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and you have 6 60 meter of your LAN wire okay so how much will be the time taken by a bit to travel from one end to the other and it will be distance by speed so 60 by 3 into 10 to the power of minus 8 seconds so that will be 20 or point zero two microsecond okay but still not zero okay so it's taking microsecond of time so this is called generally the propagation delay so now the next question is what will happen let's say so when you sense the channel okay so for example a it starts transmitting and the bit starts to travel and it comes here but C it has not reached C because even though it takes 0 0.02 microseconds and it, let's say that it's only 0 0.01 microsecond till now when your C has to transmit and it senses the channel okay so he finds okay that there is no transmission going on because he sees that okay this bit has not reached to C so he thinks that okay it is good so he also starts to transmit and then what happens his signal will travel here and both the sides and they will collide here okay so there will be collision okay so here also there is a 
small probability of collision if you start transmitting but your bits have not reached to the other station okay so this example shows that a starts transmitting at time t1 and at time t1 now c starts okay so he starts c starts to sense the channel at time t2 where the t1 signal has not reached him so okay so he senses the channel and he finds it's not busy okay so he also starts transmitting and finally in this area this is the area where both the channels are existing together and there is a collision okay so this way there is collision okay so it's very important that so if you start sending so we should there is a vulnerable time of propagation delay okay that is the maximum distance divided by the speed of the signal this is the time in which this d might sense that okay he has transmitted a has transmitted but d might sense the channel as idle and he can also start sending so okay so this is there but otherwise this is a very good protocol to enhance your throughput okay so let's move forward so let's look here so what happens so we look here sorry for this delay but i was not able to pick this up okay so let's try to see move on so now what happens is we have so vulnerable time for csma that we were discussing so when a starts to transmit so this is the time it takes for b to sense the first bit so this is the vulnerable time for b this one so is the so time taken here for b is this small and then for d it is this time where it reaches the whole part okay so a starts to transmit now this signal is reaching here so this is the vulnerable time okay propagation time for the signal so now you can understand okay so in worst case if you wait for the signal to go through the other end then this tp or the this transmission time propagation delay is the vulnerable time okay so if we move forward so now let's try to see what are the mechanism so we have how to sense the channel now so there are three different ways in which we can sense the channel the first one is one persistent so what do we do continuously keep on sensing the channel okay and when you find that okay it's now idle so start transmitting okay so this is the simplest one okay you keep on checking that okay is the channel now idle and if it is idle now you start transmitting okay so this is the simplest approach but there will be highest probability of collision so why because again node a is here node d is on the other end then what might happen a also senses the channel d also senses the channel both of them find that okay it's now idle both of them will send and there might be collision okay but throughput wise if there is no collision this is going to be the best protocol because now whenever you find it is not busy so you start sending okay but there is collision that will in fact decrease the throughput non persistent algorithm here what happens is that i sense the channel okay i'm a node i sense the channel i find it busy so i wait for a random amount of time okay so what does this randomness give us so there are let's say two three or a b and d all the three have to send data and all are sensing the channel okay so let's say c was now transmitting data and finally c stopped okay then a b and d now sense the channel if it was one persistent all of the three 
nodes A, B and D would have started at the same time because they all sensed the channel as idle and then there would have been collision. But here what you do? Here, let's say that okay, all they all decide that we will first wait for a random amount of time and that time will be chosen from 0 to 1 millisecond okay in between this so this starts at says that i will wait for 100 microsecond this says that i will wait for 150 microsecond and this says i will wait for 250 microsecond now what happens a senses the channel b senses the channel and d senses the channel and then a starts sending at 100 microsecond now when b now has waited for 150 microseconds it again senses the channel should i start transmitting but it finds a is again transmitting okay so now there is very low probability that a b and c all chooses the same number from this 0 to 1 millisecond okay because there are so many numbers so 0 to 1 millisecond so there are 0 to 1000 numbers you can choose from so there is 1 by 1000 probability that all of them will be a b and c they will all be checking the same time or at least a and b will be 1 by 1000 okay so this is there but the thing is it has less collision but there is wastage of time also the channel is not utilized fully because sometimes at least till 100 microseconds no one will be using the channel and it will be idle okay that's there so the last one that is p persistent is that now you continuously sense the channel okay then what happens is you if you find that the channel is idle so with probability p you start sending and the time is divided into time slots okay and these time slots are greater than your propagation time okay so what happens is i can only send at the starting of the time slot okay and these time slots are greater than your propagation delay why so that it doesn't happen that i am not i have not sensed the channel and there will be collision so time slot is there i sense the channel now it is idle so i will either send with probability p which is chosen from 0 to 1 so let's say with probability 0.3 i send so what will happen if i choose a random number from 0 to 1 if i get 0.15 then i will start sending my frame but if it is let's say 0.45 i got that random number it's greater than 0.3 so i will wait for one time slot then i will again sense the channel again with 0.3 probability i will send and with probability 0.7 i will not send and if I find again that okay there is channel is not idle then I will back off also okay back off means that I will wait for some exponential time so that is there so let's try to see here so this is the flow diagram so we were talking about this so I sense a channel if it is busy so I will keep on sensing it if I find idle I generate a random number from 0 to 1 so r is my random number r is greater than p it means wait for a time slot and if still the channel is busy after one time slot we use a back off process okay that initially I will wait for from 0 to 1 time slot then I will wait from 0 to 2 time slot okay I will wait from 0 to 4 time slots any random number among this and then from 0 to 8 and so on okay so but if the channel is idle and if I check that okay with probability 0.3 I might send okay so this is there for your CSMA protocol okay carrier sense multiple access so this is usually used in your LAN Okay, I hope you understand this. Thanks a lot.